Here we are then for another episode of my Ferrari Road to Glory, round 10 for the Austrian Grand Prix here today, guys. If you haven't seen round nine at Canada, go check it out. The previous video linked in the top right. For this one, we have a new steering wheel. I've been using it over the last 24 hours and I've switched to a Moser and there'll be a review sometime soon in the future. And that's the reason why I'm using it. I will revert back to the Fanatec in due course but for now we're testing out some new hardware so that may affect our pace we're going to find out either way guys jumping into this weekend's action you can see we have upgrades on the car fuel efficiency which failed in the last episode and then we have two more failures for the ICE and control electronics so both of these are going to have to be repurchased thus spending all of our R&D point allocation for this race and this episode which you know isn't ideal but we're not in desperate need of performance upgrades right now so we can afford to you know let this happen and then a few days later we had another failure on the gearbox so we also had to go ahead and repurchase that one however we did not have enough R&D points so we're gonna have to put this one on hold and get that one on the car for the next race at Silverstone so for now that's gonna be it guys and we're gonna jump into some more updates now in the comment section of the last episode I saw a suggestion which I thought was interesting and I'm gonna try it so we're going to put failures back on, but we've turned the frequency from standard to low. So in theory, it, sh it should happen less. So basically, if we have three consecutive DNFs again, I will permanently remove them. But hopefully that doesn't happen. With that said, we're going to go ahead and change the ICE, which needs a bit of a refresh. And to be fair, we're going to protect a grid drop for this because we're pretty marginal uh, around... 10 of 23 and we're on our third unit which if you do the math is a bit over halfway so um we'll see how it goes either way this weekend is a sprint weekend and we have rain for the sprint at the beginning and the end along with the main race for the first half of the race qualifying however is dry with that said here is confirmation of those upgrades previously mentioned so you can see we have two on two off which isn't too bad um hopefully we'll get them all eventually the big one this weekend is Haas they have brought a goliath of an upgrade package to this one I mean look at the step they've taken they've essentially left Formula B and joined Formula A in one swoop of upgrades which is absolutely unbelievable either way with that done into practice we go driving our new Moser wheel I've been spending the day getting it set up hence while this up upload is going to be very late um took me a while to get it fine-tuned and I'm still kind of working on it but I was happy enough with the balance to get you know this video done and yeah we're gonna try and get through it practice went very smooth we had very good tire wear and surprisingly low fuel consumption for a track that's you know considered high speed low downfalls flat out uh, fuel efficiency is very high around here anyway practice one in the books p17 nothing to really you know r rant home about either way uh because it's a sprint weekend we quickly transition from practice into qualifying and we're going to get straight to it so soft tires on straight into qualifying mode and looking to go as fast as possible now i will admit i did a bit of time trial before this to get you know dialed in and get comfortable with the wheel and i was doing this track as well so i kind of know where the limit is however there are a lot of upgrades on this car so it's not one-to-one -one accurate to the original car but we go purple straight away a one minute three zero on our very first lap which i was very surprised by really really surprised we kept on pushing i tried a second attempt so i had a cool down lap and then a second push i was fueled for those two laps and to be fair it was similar pace i just made a couple of small errors a bit of time in the final corner there and we go half attempt slower but overall the pace seems good and I'm actually fairly consistent with this wheel already. Um, you can see end of the first runs, our middle sector is crushing everyone, which is, you know, really good to see. First, okay. Final, decent enough. Verstappen setting the pace through there. But we're now going to jump on to our final attempt. Again, we're fueled for two laps if we need it. So this is going to be lap number one. And we're going to see if this is going to be good enough to give us an improved lap time. The target, of course, is to get into the twos. Lando Norris is P2 right now, so he's actually done a point one. So that yeah, I do have some pace to find. Anyway, turn number one. You want to bring the car over to the left, brake at about 70 meters, fourth gear, and crucial here to get the exit out of the first quarter. Then sector one draws to a close, and you prepare turn three. You're going to bring the car onto the curb, brake at about 90 meters, 
down to third. Just missed the apex there by a fraction, but we get good rotation and crucially an even better exit, and we're already just under a tenth up. Turn four, bring the car onto the curb, break at the Black Shadow just before, so about 70 meters again, 75. Use all the runoff curb and Astro, and we look at that, we find pretty much a tenth of a second. Now then, into the double left-hander, trying crucially here to just carry very high corner speed. It's not so much about the apexes, you just have to try and go fast, or as fast as possible through the corners, and you can see over two tenths up. Turn nine, break at the 50, down to seven, and then the final corner, attack the inside curb a lot, power down super early, and we find three tenths of a second and drop the hammer in qualifying before the sprint race. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's sprint. Martinez lines up on pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Norris, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Perez, Stroll, Albon, Joe, Sonoda, Ocon, Bottas, Ricardo, and Logan Sargent. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Now, I don't usually do intros for the sprint, but this one is interesting because the forecast, I have no idea. This could be really random. Could be all the way wet, wet to dry, quick switch to dries, and the majority of the sprint in dry tire. Who knows? Uh, Fuel-wise, I'm going for 0.5. I'm taking no chances, but this is going to be interesting. Also, worth noting, first race, first everything with this wheel, and just to add a bit more spice to it, it's my first wet race as well, so I'm still not used to the dry, and now I've got to drive wet. Fun times. Right, here we go. First race start on the Moser. Holding in the clutch paddle. And away we go. Great start. Really good start. No need for battery. We take the apex at turn one. The clear up to second. Seems quite damp. The rain is still falling, so we're not quite near dry, dry yet, but we'll see how it goes. I've put the brake bias on 57, so um, hopefully that will help us. Always move it slightly more frontward in these conditions. We're snapping back up to second. We're overtaking Leclerc. Just want to try and avoid having any big wheel spin or lock-up moments and just kind of build up our confidence bit by bit. So let's just get through the first lap and see what the gap is over the line to Verstappen before we start making any plans. So far, it was pretty decent, although Verstappen is gaining, so then we're going to have to try and commit and find a bit more speed than this. But it's okay. First lap, we've done a pretty good job of holding the lead, and our confidence will only go up from here. Right now, tries or inters. Wait, there we go, careful. I think we might actually this could be very close in terms of seeing this race through in these conditions. So we'll see. Could be a late change. Okay, clear. Yellow flag. Not sure who that is. A bit wide there, tried to get out of it, and we didn't get a warning, so we got lucky. Russell. Okay. So one of the Mercs out the race. No DRS, of course, so no direct threat from Verstappen. We're pretty okay right now. I think we've got this under control right now. Pace is looking good. Car feels really good. This wheel feels very intuitive, very easy to drive in the wet once you get it set up. Okay, we've got a full course caution. The safety car's out. Keep an eye on the Delta, we need to keep it positive to avoid a penalty. Slow down, maintain positive Delta. Oh, this is interesting. The rain's passing now, so expect it to ease up in the next few minutes. Be ready for the grip to come back, but don't overheat the tyres. Okay, not sure whether drives or inches are faster, we're right on the crossover. I'm gonna stay out. 
We're not going to box in case it changes to dry. We'll stay out one more. It's still raining. The rain's still coming down. I'm not going to go for anything stupid. Oh, I'll say that. Piastri's gone. And Hulkenberg's gone. Interesting. Still raining a bit. Although I just feel like the rain has just about stopped all of a sudden. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I mean, we're going to box this lap. I don't think I've ever stopped behind a safety car before. Right, safety car in this lap. We're not off Delta yet, but I'm going to go into the pits and floor it. Right, let's have you in at the end of this lap, please. I wonder if everyone's going to box. Yep, everyone's straight in. So forget the restart. Charles is in the pits. Right, double stack. Hopefully I've got my controls prepared. Here we go. Yep, those cars that pit on the last lap are on drives and we're going to get held. Oh my god, that was such a long hold. Horrific. And that's going to ruin the clover more. And they put us on mediums for some reason, even though I chose softs. Look after these tyres now. We want to finish the race on this compound. Hmm. Well, not exactly optimal on tyres. I did choose a soft, but it must have reset. Either way, those who pit have done it. So I think we're only on for one point right now. I don't think we're going to catch those cars ahead. So that might be all she wrote for the sprint. Let's just try and finish in P9. Actually, I think that's our pay score points, don't they? So it could be pointless here, unless we catch. To be fair, there are some cars out and into still, so we will get points. Bottas in the pits with a five second, or Ricardo in there as well. I'm assuming Norris. What I did see on Inter, so will also be in the pits. So this will move us back into the points. There we go, P6. That is probably our realistic finishing position. Possibly if we could get a fast lap of the race, although being on mediums might not be ideal for that. Oh, Norris hadn't pit yet. I thought we did, but he stayed out. Now he's gone to softs. So we'll take P5, another place, and we do get the fast lap for now. Sergeant up next in P4. I don't think we'll catch him though, realistically. Track is fully dried out now as we take a warning for the final corner. Alonso took my fastest lap, and we can't get it back. We're not going to catch Sergeant, so let's just bring this one home. This will be a decent result considering the strategy. Right, well, last lap of the sprint. Car feels great, wheel feels great, I feel like I'm just really fast. Piastri though pulls a blinder, McLaren get it spot on. Perez gets second, Hulkenberg, not officially a podium, but P3. Sargent in a brilliant P4, and we'll bring home a P5. And that's the end of the race, we'll see you in Park Fermi. Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship except the very first back in 1964. It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. It's a short lap here in Spielberg with just 10 corners, seven to the right and three to the left, making up the total distance of 2.6 miles. And expect to see a lot of cars running wide today, especially through the last corner as the wet conditions make the cars skittish through the downhill sections. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Oscar Piastri lines up on pole position. Sergio Perez lines up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Hulkenberg, Sargent, Martinez, Fernando Alonso, Hamilton, Norris, Verstappen, Leclerc, Joe, Gasly, Ocon, Sonoda, Albon, Ricardo, Bottas, Magnussen, Russell, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. 
Let's see who can prevail today. Not one of the easiest days to go racing. It's damp, it's slippery, there's dark clouds as far as the eye can see. The rain is here then, and that's going to take away a lot of the grip. Anthony Davidson, that's going to make turn one very interesting indeed. Yeah, it's these kind of conditions where you can go in with one of two mindsets. You either see it as an opportunity, or you're worried that all of your hard work's about to be undone. We've been stuck in these conditions now for a few hours, more or less this kind of intensity, so we don't seem to have too much standing water, so we're not likely to be starting behind a safety car. And like you say, Crofty, the charge down into Turn 1 will be quite interesting. I think we're in for a cracking Grand Prix. So I think that might have been one of the best sprint races in a long time. Seeing the AI actually take initiative and be different on strategy, we have a very mixed up grid. Who would have thunk it? Sergeant P4, Hulkenberg P3, Verstappen Leclerc, row 5. Anyway, for this one, strategy is fairly straightforward. It's going to be about half a race on Inter, or third of a race on Inter, and then the rest most likely on medium or hard. Simple one stop. I think fuel-wise, I'm going to run what we had in practice. Race Sims was a 48.8. That should be about right. So I'm not going to change nothing else. I'm going to send it and see what happens. I'm confident in our pace and the car. So let's get to it and let's try and get the W and more points in the championship. It looks like the weather is going to dry up in about five minutes time. Inter seem to be the fastest tyre for now. Okay, could be a similar transition to the sprint then. So that'd be interesting. That's quite early. Could be a two stop then. Here we go. Main event time. We have to clear Sargent and Hulkenberg. Quick five lights. Alonso on the inside there, so we can't take that line. Oh, look at that, Hulkenberg defending. Sergeant around the outside. And up into P3 briefly, as we get a brilliant exit out of one, and we're going to try and snatch it away. But the Williams, as you'd expect, very little drag, very quick on a straight. We're going to go a bit deep into turn three. Yellow flag behind. I have to just get out of it. I think we've passed Sergeant off track, but I've not been given any form of off track by the game. Unless something happened, there was a yellow flag. I couldn't see a damn thing. I was off track. So maybe it was Perez. Uh, look at the gap to Piastri. Could be wrong. Either way, um, we'll take it. And we're P3. And no legal overtakes, <laughs> according to the game anyway. So let's settle in. Different conditions. Once again, we have to readapt to the wet. Piastri Perez will be a much more on our sort of pace. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to try and build up our confidence and hopefully try to hit an apex and hopefully make some moves. So, let's get to it. Settle down. Longer race. Patience required. Let's do this. Already feel like we're starting to knock on the door. No battery being used. Piastri 11 9. We're a tenth slower, but I feel like we're a bit quicker than Perez here. Knock, knock, Checo. Knock, knock. We've got more pace right now. Let's try and get him. We should hopefully go purple as well if we have a good exit and a good final couple of corners. Perez wobbles again. We're not going to go purple, I don't think, but we're going to try and line this move up. Oh, never mind. Perez locks up. Pressure. Pays off. And that's us through. And we can now go on to Piastri. Happy days. Let's get after it. Hello, here we go. Rain's still coming down at a decent rate. If it stays like this until lap 10, it will be a one stop race. I don't think the line is really dry enough yet to start thinking about slicks. Let's hold on to the inters for a little while longer. Track limits, first warning. Soft tar selected. We'll see when this weather changes. Rain has now stopped. We're pressuring Piastri here in a big way. I'm very quick right now. Let's see if we can try and get by. I don't think it's time for drives though. The track still looks a bit shiny. But we are way quicker than Oscar right now. So we can take P1. And get back to where we was in the sprint before the safety car. Just going to get close here. Try to set this one up nicely. Oh my god, Piastri does the exact same thing as Perez. Two times in a row. We'll take it. Easy, easy pickings. 
Thank you very much. And away we go. Let's try and build a gap now. And get ready for this weather change. Oh, Piastri Perez pit. Interesting. So that could be drives. Track still seems a bit damp to me. But uh, that's okay. The Inters can hold on on a damp track. So they're not super slow. They go on to hard, which is what I've selected. You can see I've changed my tyre choice. Okay, the stewards have now enabled DRS. DRS is now online. I reckon a hard tyre to the end could work. Right then, in we go. Pit stop time. Hopefully we don't get undercut. And we are preferably out of DRS range. Keep it within the white line there on pit entry. Oh, quite a Honda steer. Nice. Good pit entry so far with this new wheel. Everything's working well. Let's get ready for the release on the clutch. And there we go. Nice clean stop. Everyone else on enters in. Will these hards go to the end? That's my big query. Okay, one stop to go. Just one stop left in this strategy. I guess we'll find out. I think it's maybe a couple of laps early. So uh, we'll see. We've kept the gap to Perez and Piastri. So soft tyres at the ready for the end if they were to be necessary. I've also got fresh mediums available. So we can go either way on strategy. Track's still a bit green. Not fully there yet. There's not a lot of grip. They're quicker than the Inters, but a few more laps yet. We'll see purple laps every lap for the next few. Now the track is ramping up. On this lap especially, there's a big difference in, in this overall grip. The car now starting to work. Carry more speed, run the higher gears. Now we're going to move the goalposts. There we go, that's a bit more like it. Also, Piastri and Perez battled quite hard on that lap. The gap was 3.5 at the start, but they had a decent scrap. So it's now gone beyond 5 seconds, so we'll take that. We're pushing again on this lap, using some battery to try and get a gap. Let's see if we go purple. There we go, into the 105s. Now the track is fully rubbered in. This race is all ours now. I think we can make it to the end quite easily. Half race distance, now the sun's coming out. We're probably around 50% wear, but it should be an easy one to the finish. So, no need to stop again, unless absolutely necessary. So we're now going to go into lift and coast mode, because we are running out of fuel. We've burnt through all our reserve. I've just got to try and get a lift and coast pattern down once I have that locked in and it's efficient and I'm able to do it in a quick way where we don't need lap time then we'll be just fine. So good thing we've got the gap. That's why we pushed. We can now use it to try and save some fuel. Perez Piastri pit off their mediums onto probably another set of mediums, maybe run the set of hards. Like I said, we're going to probably start to the end here, unless I feel it's necessary to box. I think we've lost fourth gear. I just realised we dropped through to third. Luckily, through this section, we don't really need it. The lowest will go is... A mechanical issue means you've lost one of the gears, I'm afraid. Say again, you have lost access to one of the gears. There we go, confirmation. We only really use, you know, fifth, the lowest. It's only really turn one which I take in fourth. Luckily, there's only 10 corners around here. The other flag at turn three. We'll take it in fifth, just to avoid having issues. Albon out. Could there be a late safety car? Looks like we're gonna be all right. Okay, fourth gear back, which is good because I forget. Turn four, I take it in fourth. So I was actually losing more time than I expected. Still good pace. Half a second off my PB using battery and just pushing a little bit without burning too much fuel. Final few laps. Tires will finish in the 50s. Everything looks really good. Okay, the safety car is out. Safety car is out. We need to form up at reduced pace. Keep a close eye on that delta time. Make sure to keep it positive. Well, how are the turntables. Charles is in the pits. Oh my god, we're going to have to stack. We should be okay, but oh my god, what a late twist. This race was so comfortable. We should be able to rejoin ahead of Perez and Piastri on a fresh set of softs. Leclerc may be damaged. He was involved in the incident. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. Chop, chop. Come on, come on. 1.5. Wow. That's some real. I've never seen that before. This is going to be close. 
with Perez and Piastri now, really close. Here we go. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Let's go. Oh my god. I think we're just in between. Yep, just in between, I think. Safety car in this lap. We're going to get three laps of racing action. My only concern is the gearbox. I hope we don't have any more troubles with it and it just holds on until the end. Anyway, we're going to get the brake bias sorted out and we're going to go racing. Hopefully, we can get the win and fastest lap. Here we go then. Back on the way. Checo leads us away. That was a great final corner. Okay, clear. Right on the money. Nice and close through one. Look at the grip difference. Here we go. AI going to use some battery. Highlighting our lack of straight line speed. That's okay. Patience. It's a virtual. We'll just use the grip. Bit of contact on the way through, but look at that. Absolutely smashed it on traction. Leclerc, will, well not Leclerc, Perez will try to re-challenge, but we'll just outbreak him on the fresh softs. Right, let's try and save the battery for next lap to go for a fast lap attempt. Uh, if this one was, wasn't really optimal. Maybe the last lap was the one. I did go quicker, or quickest. Okay, we'll marginally improve, but... DRS has been enabled. DRS is now enabled. That will do. That should be the extra point. For snapping up to third, overtaking Piastri. Not good. They'll clear out the points. Right, here we go. Last lap of the race. Great sprint. Great main race. Honestly, could have won them both. But strategy, of course, played a part. Either way, we're quick. This wheel was really good. And we win. Thank you. I need a moment. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. What a drive that was to take the win for Ferrari today. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, tyre management probably played quite a large role in the outcome of this one. As ever, it's not just about speed, it's all about maintaining that speed consistently over a stint, over a race distance. So being able to keep up the lap times while still being smooth on the controls and gentle on the tyres, that's really where the race was won today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari, do it again. Now that was a real statement victory because our main rival in the championship, Charles Leclerc, finished P14, which means no points at all in the entire weekend. So it's a double whammy. We hit Leclerc for 30, and that is a real key point of the championship. Let's break it down though, and let's go event through each event. And yeah, sprint, you can see P5, Leclerc P10, Perez second and Verstappen P9, so mixed fortunes for both teams. In the race, Perez second, Verstappen third, we win, Leclerc no points, which means overall, on the balance of it, Red will get a 2-4 and get 40 points on this weekend. We get 30, so they outscore us by 10, but Leclerc having a clangor. So let's look at the standings, and as you can see, we're 38 points clear of new second place man Max Verstappen. Leclerc 43 adrift and Perez 63. Right now, we're moving at the halfway stage and we have a comfortable control over this championship. In the constructors, 58 is the gap between us and Red Bull. McLaren and Mercedes still within reach depending on upgrades, but either way, it's a two-way fight and it's gonna be interesting. Still lots of races to go, a lot can happen, guys. Like, subscribe, as always, a big shout out to the members. Check out all my sponsors, link down below, affiliates and commissions. And yeah, as always, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them already. And yeah, guys, cheers for watching, and I'll see you soon. Adios.